कौन है ये लोग कहां से आते हैं Nice postcard. What is so special about it? Do you recognize the city? It is Munich. Everyone can see that. I wonder why you have a postcard of Munich. Anna, I do not have time for these silly questions. I must leave. Anna, what are you doing? You let her go. Gentlemen, please let me tell you Claudia's story. I promise you will not be disappointed. This is ridiculous. Claudia Kopp was born in Munich. Claudia, you told me you were French. And why did she call you Claudia Kopp when your last name is Perret? Kopp is her maiden name. She got married in France and became Claudia Perret. After she divorced her husband, she returned to Germany and joined a covert operations group seeking to bring the Nazi party to power. What? Go on. She was introduced to Mr. Peterson and started working as his nurse. And so she gained access to his wealth and connections. Did she kill? In the covert operations group, she was part of the unit dealing with oriental religions, occultism, and their connections to Nazi symbolism and power. Her first task was to get in touch with a British professor who had just discovered a breakthrough in the search for immortality. What utter nonsense. This actually makes sense. I told you I was contacted a few times. Claudia knew the professor would be at this hotel, so she persuaded Mr. Peterson to come here for a short holiday. Mr. Peterson was sick and doctors told us to go to the Alps. That is the only reason we came here. The only problem was that Claudia did not know what the professor looked like, and both Professor Clark and Professor Kinski were here. Time was of the essence, so Claudia had to act quickly. She tore out the photos from the guest photo album and stole the hotel keys, so she would have access to all the rooms. So that explains the missing keys and the missing photographs. On the day I arrived, Claudia decided to check Professor Kinski's room. But alas, the professor returned to his room at a very unfortunate moment when Claudia was going through his luggage. That is the funniest thing I have ever heard. And then what? He saw me and had a heart attack? No. Professor Kinski threatened to report you to the police and tell all the guests you were a thief. So you had no other choice. And the next morning you remembered he complained about his heart. My god. I do not believe this. Claudia, is this true? This is a joke, father. Can you not see? She has accused us all. The only innocent person here is Anna. Anna, go on, please. It's a telephone. I will answer it, Otto. on the telephone a man named helmut he was looking for claudia i do not know him he asked me to tell you that the plans have changed plans i don't know about any plans who is helmut i told you i do not know him anna please continue where was i oh yes when claudia killed my god After their conversation, Claudia decided to take care of Ulla. She acted quickly, and we discovered Ulla's body later that evening. Complete nonsense. The next morning, Dr. Hartman decided to investigate. 
As a doctor, it was obvious to him that something wasn't right, and he suspected that Professor Kinski and Ulla were both killed. Ironically, he discovered the smuggling operation during his investigation. Furthermore, he realized it was run by Otto with the help of Father Lenz. What a shame. As I said, it, it is not what you think it is. Oh, never mind. Anna, please, continue. Dr. Hartman wanted to share his findings and wrote two notes. One to me and one to Walter, asking us to come to the cellar at 11 o'clock, where he wanted to show us the boxes full of cigarettes. Well, at least Dr. Hartman wasn't killed by me. On the contrary, Claudia. You knew Dr. Hartman discovered something, and so you decided to kill him as quickly as you could. You didn't have time to stage another heart attack, so you stole Mr. Peterson's gun, ran to the cellar, and shot him. Later, you put the gun case in Giovanni's room, and the gun in Professor Kinski's luggage. You confused us all. Walter found the body first, and took out his gun, and began to look around. When I entered the cellar, I saw Dr. Hartman's body and Walter holding a gun. We argued, and after we searched the cellar, we left and informed everyone of Dr. Hartman's death. Nonsense! When we announced the death of Dr. Hartman, it turned out Giovanni was missing a pair of shoes. Professor Clark had mislaid his passport, and Mr. Peterson could not find his gun. But now we know what happened to Mr. Peterson's gun. But what about the shoes and the passport? We are almost there, Otto. Be patient, please. Did you find my passport, Anna? Yes, I did. Here it is. Later that day, Claudia pretended to be attacked. It removed all suspicion from her, but a tiny little detail immediately caught my attention. A syringe from Dr. Hartman's medical chest. I asked Claudia if she had any visitors, and since she had to improvise quickly, she told me Dr. Hartman was in her room, which was impossible, because he was in a wheelchair and couldn't make it to the second floor. I must have mixed him up with somebody else. Later that night, when I shared my concerns with Otto, Claudia entered the room. She was obviously worried and wanted us to suspect Walter. When I went to the cellar before going to bed, wearing Giovanni's shoes, Claudia locked me up and turned off the lights. And when I got out, I saw the fresh shoe prints made by a man. It was very clever. How could you, Claudia? Meanwhile, Mr. Peterson had begun to suspect Claudia. He confronted her and demanded a straight answer. At first, Claudia acted innocent. However, after a while, she pretended she had to show him something. When they got to the backyard, Claudia stabbed him and dragged his body as far away as she could. Then she returned to the hotel and spent the night with Giovanni, a perfect alibi. You witch! In order to incriminate Giovanni even more, she smashed his record and scattered its pieces near the cellar door. A cold-blooded killer. What happens next is relatively straightforward. We all thought the killer was either Walter or Giovanni. The only problem was that Walter knew that he was not the killer, and he doubted that Giovanni was capable of murder. He suspected Claudia, and she had to keep him quiet. So many innocent lives! And there was one last thing I needed to check. It was more or less clear to me that the killer was Claudia. I just didn't know if she had communicated with someone outside. That's the phone lines for down. Exactly. Yesterday I saw Claudia walking around with a mirror. I decided to do the same. And to my surprise, when I started to reflect the sunlight to the other part of the mountain, I got the same response back. Very clever, Claudia. What do you say? I won't say anything. Not until I see my lawyer. Very well. Police! Open up, police! What is going on here? Is everything all right? Thank God you are here. We have a murderer here. Mrs. Claudia Perret. Mrs. Perret? Is this true? I won't say anything without my lawyer. All right, then. Stay here, please. We need to check the premises.
Hannah, thank you very much for helping us solve the case. I'm glad I could help. We will take Claudia into custody. That is good to hear. I suggest you stay at the hotel for one more night, as it is too late to set off on a long trip. Do you mind, Otto? No, of course not. After everything that has happened, I am not sure I could sleep here alone anyway. Very well. Have a good rest. Thank you. Goodbye. I have packed all my belongings, and I'm ready to go. Let's go outside. Good morning. Thank you very much, Anna. Good morning. You are welcome, Otto. Well, I hope you will come here again. I will. Anna, I have one question. Yes? I don't really know how to say this. About my other business. Oh, you mean the smuggling? It is none of my business. But you will get caught eventually, Otto. If I were you, I would stop. Thank you. Uh, the car is waiting for you. It will take you to town. Have a safe trip home, Anna. Take care. Khatam. Bye-bye, Tata. Goodbye, Gaya.